What is up guys, William here from fitnessforbackpain.com. What I'm gonna go over today is a list of amazing core exercises that you can do if you have had a spinal fusion. These are my go-to exercises that are both safe for you, that are easily modified, and that will teach you this neutral spine, anti-rotation, anti-extension, beginner to advanced level core training that you need, that is critical for you to building strength around your spine in the trunk muscles and doing it safely. There's a lot of fear around having a spinal fusion. You're not sure what to do, what the best thing to do is. You don't want to cause further damage. You don't want to cause irritation or issues above or below the fusion site. So this video is going to be for you. If you want to strengthen your core, if you want to know what exercises you should do for it, stay tuned. Now before we jump in, if you have not already seen it, I have a workshop that I give away for free. If you are exercising and you are dealing with some kind of chronic pain, if you've had a fusion, you're trying to navigate exercise, you're having issues structuring your workouts or certain exercises are causing pain, you don't know what you should do or you shouldn't do, um, there's a lot of do's and don'ts. I go into detail in this workshop that you can watch and implement. There's five critical things that everybody that I work with has to address when it comes to core training, what you do before and after your workout, what you need to stop doing before and after your workout, and more. I cover all these things in that workshop. You can check that out in the link below or go over to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash essentials workshop. All right, so without further ado, let's jump in. So when it comes to starting off your core training, I like to go with developmental style exercises first, and that's where we're gonna jump in here, okay? So what I'll do first is what I call the deep core exercise. So what that looks like is on my back, if you have some issues with being on your back in this position, uh, you can always put place a towel or double up your mats uh, beneath you so you have a little bit softer of something that you're laying on. So the deep core, basically what you're doing is you're gonna take your two fingers, you're gonna slide them down the inside of your pelvic bone here, and you're going to contract your pelvic floor. That's turning your deep core muscles on, okay? A lot of times I'll use the cue, uh, your, your, your peeing muscles, right? If you were gonna stop or start your stream, you're going to contract and stop it, and then you're gonna relax it to allow the stream to begin again. Essentially, you're using those exact muscles. So, here, I'm gonna contract my pelvic floor. I'll actually feel the muscles under my fingers kind of get a little bit stiffer. That's how you know you're contracting your deep core. Now, that's the first exercise. The second exercise we're gonna to go to is now the leg slides. These are the developmental exercises you wanna do first if you are more at a beginner level. So I've got my deep core contraction going. I've done a few sets of those. I'm really good at that. Now I'm gonna move on. So the deep core leg slides is I'm in position here. I know my deep core is on. I'm actually gonna slide my leg out while contracting this deep core and I'm gonna bring it back, right? Out and back. My spine is neutral, my ribs are down, I'm breathing, sliding out and coming back. You can do the same thing for leg drops if you wanna come out to the side you can do those as well. Get creative. Basically what you're learning or you're trying to teach yourself is deep core coordination. I'm contracting my deep core and I'm moving my legs, seeing if I can keep things nice and tight. So once I've played around with different types of leg drop exercises, I've got my deep core, I'm mo moving my legs around, I might be doing a little bit more movement here, trying to get myself, again, building that core strength and core coordination in my deep core. Let's move on to some a little more difficult stuff. This one here, I'm gonna grab my stability ball. These are what I call dead bugs, or what are all commonly called dead bugs. I really like doing the stability ball version of this because I like to create tension, right? Oftentimes when you've had a spinal surgery, you've got some sensitivity issues with movement, you want full body tension and it really, really helps when it comes to navigating pain and building strength around a pain-free environment. So what I'll do here, I'm gonna bring my legs up, so I'm trying to create a 90 degree here in my knees and in my hips. From there, I'm actually gonna take my arms and I'm gonna push towards my knees and I'm gonna pretty much do the same thing towards my hands. So I'm trying to squeeze this ball, 
right? So this is a great beginner level dead bug. If you can just squeeze this ball, trying to pop this ball, that's really good. You're gonna feel your core turn on, okay? To get into the dead bug version, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my opposite arm and the opposite leg, and I'm going to drop them out and move them above my head. So what it's gonna look like, I'm gonna take the left leg and the right arm, and I'm gonna drop them out. Back to the top. Or I can do the opposite. Left arm, right leg. Just like that. If both arms and legs going out at the same time is too intense for you, you can experiment with just your hands. So I'm here, I'm squeezing, drop the arm out. Or you can do the leg. All right, so the next one is the bird dog. Really cool exercise, very simple, easily modified. You can modify it a few different ways. What I'm gonna do is essentially, you're trying to mimic a bird dog, as in the hunting dog. So what you're gonna do, is I'll break it down to the easiest or simplest way you can do it. You can take your leg out here and back, out and back. Again, your ribs are locked down, spine's neutral. I'm not in overextension trying to do this. I'm not trying to do that type of thing. Spine is in a neutral position and I'm sliding that leg out. Boom. Make this a little bit harder or you can do the opposite with your arm. So I'm here, I've done my legs. Now let's work on my arms. Back, up. Back when I'm coming out to this point, I'm trying to create a full body tension into my glutes. The same thing when I was doing just my legs, I'm sliding out. I'm trying to create tension out through my heels into my glutes, into my lower back. Now let's put it together. Very similar to the dead bug, left leg and right arm. I'm gonna take my right arm out here and my left leg back. So keep in mind, I'm not trying to do this type of thing. I'm just trying to punch straight out here, back, here, and back. Note that I'm not, again, trying, I'm making sure I'm trying to keep my spine neutral, my lower back into a good, healthy, safe, neutral position. And I'm driving back with my legs here, driving that heel to the back taking this arm and going it straight out, creating that full body tension in this position. Again, there's lots of ways you can modify the bird dog. It's a really fun exercise, just be careful with it. Oftentimes with people who have lower back sensitivity issues, too much of that extension or repeated extension can cause some sensitivity. So just keep that in mind when you're working through this exercise. I always suggest breaking it down to the simplest version first and then building up tolerance as you move on, okay? So the next exercise we're gonna do is actually the bear crawl. So you can do these two different ways. You can do one in place, and I'll show you here, or you can do one where you're actually moving. So the in place one, ideally what you're doing is you're just trying to create a neutral tension, right? So I'm trying to get into a good, healthy position here. I would say I'm in a neutral position. My lats are engaged, shoulder blades back and down. What I'm gonna do is go weight bearing, right? I'm gonna go weight bearing onto my toes, and my hands. See what happens, see my knees? This is not weight bearing, this is weight bearing. So bear crawls, you can do a static bear crawl where it's the opposite hand, opposite leg, which requires a lot of balance. So if you feel confident being in this position here and say, hey, you know what? I feel it working my core, I'm ready to move on. You can do single hand, or you can do single leg. One up, other one up, just like that. So, you got the static, you got the arm and leg raising. Now let's do some walking static bear crawls, okay? So I'll start back here at a static camera. What I'm gonna do is I'm doing small, small movements. Making sure that my neutral spine is happy I'm not bending, not twisting. As I'm walking, as I'm kind of going from hand to hand, foot to foot, I don't want my pelvis to be going side to side. So if you were to see me like this, 
And if I were to be in position here and I start crawling and I start shifting my weight back and forth, and if you saw my lower back, it'd be like, here's my butt cheeks. They're kind of doing this. You don't want that. You want to be a nice neutral position throughout the entire exercise. So go slow. It's not about distance or how far you go. It's about quality movements, being pain-free, and building up resilience in that area, okay? So now let's look at two plank variations that you can do, pretty common. I like, you can do the front plank, that's one I'm not gonna show you here. Obvious one is a front plank. A little bit, there's a version of the, of the front plank that I like to use and I've been using a lot more lately now. It's the full arm or straight arm front plank with arm movements. It throws in a little curveball. okay? So I'll do that one first. So when you're getting in position, I'll be here. So I'm on all hands and knees, go into the full straight arm front plank. From here, what I'm gonna do, take my feet a little bit wider, make sure that glute is, is contracted and my pelvis is slightly tilted under, okay? So once it's under, here, I'm gonna take one arm, come to the left shoulder, right shoulder, come down, take my right arm, go to my left shoulder. I'm gonna go back and forth, okay? So if being fully weight bearing is hard, come down your knees, grab a towel, toss it under your knees, make sure everything's neutral. I'm gonna do the same thing. Now obviously this is a lot easier than being full weight bearing on your toes. So what you can do to make it a little bit harder is bring your knees a little bit closer together so they're not so spread out. Closer together, arms a little bit wider apart, and then add in the arm movements, okay? All right, so the next one is the side plank. Very common, obviously most people know how to do this, but I'll go through some quick modifications here. Easiest one here up on my knees. I'm side planking, very basic, very simple, not hard to do or mess up right in this position here. If this is getting a little bit too easy, time to move on. You can now take your leg and put it out. To make it a little bit easier though, I can bend either this back leg here or I can put this arm down this way. So this seems pretty easy for me here, so I'll stay here. My leg is back, I'm not supporting myself 100%. This back leg is helping me kind of give that secondary support so I can be in this position. If I needed it, I could be here. Okay, obviously full weight bearing plank, side plank would be here. As far as the position of your legs, I mean, I've done them both ways to where my front leg is out front and I've done it to where my front leg is out back. I think as long as what feels good in your spine, if you feel like you're too twisted the other way and you need your top leg out in front of you, do that. So the, the last thing you wanna do is cause unnecessary torque in your spine to the point where you're actually feeling symptoms. Like, ow, this hurts, but I gotta do it because William at Fitness for Back Pain said you should do it. Never take that as your solution. Always follow what feels best for you. Do these exercises, try them out, try the modifications and then see how they work for you in the long run, okay? So you've got the straight arm plank, alternating hands, you've got the side plank. Now I'm gonna show you three more exercises that you can do with a band, very simple, same band, at your home, at your gym, wherever you work out, they're really cool, check this out. All right, so I call this exercise the banded sit back, all you need is something to anchor your band to and a light band. So I've got a red one here. If you have a lighter one and you need a lighter one, you can use that. If you have a heavier one and this is not hard enough, use that as well. Go off of what you can manage in your own situation. So what you're trying to do here is you're challenging that neutral position. It's all about that neutral position, learning to challenge it, kind of throw some chaos into the mix when it comes to challenging the body and making sure that you can move and hinge and use your body and coordinate your core and your strength with it you're trying to build with movement, daily life. That's what happens when you're in life. You don't just sit on your back and do crunches or a certain kind of exercise, you move. So this is kind of like a progressive movement or a progressive style of exercise that you can kind of work yourself up to to challenge everyday movement with core strength. So the hinge back, basically the, the, the movement that, that you're trying to get better at or master is this one here. Oftentimes we have pain 
or stiffness or aggravation when we're kind of doing this in this position because our back's been operated on, we're having some issues, therefore being in this position kind of causes tension back here. So the more you can relax and get comfortable in this position and learn to keep that spine in neutral position, the better you're gonna be. So what I'm gonna do is add this band. So I'm gonna put the band here on my shoulder. This is gonna be the easiest version of it. And I'm gonna come back and push forward. Come back, push forward, very gentle. It's not intense at all. But once I come out to here, I can feel that tension building in my trunk. So to make this harder, arm comes straight out. Same idea, pushing forward, come back, pushing forward, back, forward, just like this. All right, so those are the banded sit backs. Make sure you hit both sides of the body. Next one I'm gonna show you is a payloaf press. From the payloaf press, we have one more exercise to show you, and that is the wood chops, okay? But I'm actually gonna do an up chop in this exercise. So the payloaf press comes first. All right, so the payloaf press is challenging that neutral position. So what you wanna do, get into position. Ribs are brought down, uh, pelvis is in neutral. I'm gonna walk out to build tension in this band here. And the idea is, is to bring my hands together, make sure everything is nice and stacked, everything is in neutral, and then I'm going to press out and come back. Press out and then come back, right? You can make this harder. The further your hands go out, the harder it's gonna be. The closer your hands are to the body, the easier it's gonna be. You can make it even harder by going out and doing a little extra. If you feel like being extra that day. Just like that. This is what's called the payloaf press and you wanna do them on both sides of the body, making sure you're not rotating, everything's locked in, glutes are on, trunk is braced, nice and neutral, and trying to relax the lower back a little bit. Don't always feel like you have to contract and keep everything super stiff. As long as the trunk is on, everything is in, is in neutral, as you go out, the body's gonna respond the way it should, okay? So if you have pain way out here, you're gonna chop it back and only stay within the parameters of what feels good to you, obviously. So the last exercise I'm gonna show you is the up chop. So I'll use this same dumbbell that I had earlier. Very simple. I'll have it mounted to the ground. If I have a rig, I'll do the same thing here. What I'm doing is essentially trying to throw something behind me, okay? So you can do down chops where it's the same thing, where the band's mounted above you and you're coming down. Here, I'm coming up and away. Now you can hold these a few different ways. Some people like it like this. Some people like it like this. Some people, I tend to sometimes get weird and I'll kind of do more of a out here and I'll throw it up this way. So find a way that works good for you. For just for this video, I'll keep it planted just like this. So my dumbbell's solid, my band's connected. I got an over under grip here and I'm just gonna come from my left pocket, come out and over my right shoulder. Down, keep that tension. Obviously I have to choke up a little bit to build tension. Here, away, back, away. Come down, away. Focusing here, hips are straight. Not too much rotation here. Try to keep it in the shoulders only. Make sure you're doing both sides. So if you're gonna do, obviously this side, do the equal amount of times on the opposite side and you'll be good to go. So there you have it. Tons of exercises you can do from your home, from the gym that you work out at. If you don't have a home gym or a home studio, a lot of these you can do without much equipment at all. But these are all really good and safe if you've had some kind of um, spinal fusion. So test them out, try them out. Obviously not all exercises are gonna fit you specifically. So if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. So just real quick, if you're still watching this, you get the bonus, we're gonna talk about reps and sets, okay? So you can do these a few different ways. I, I always suggest if you're just gonna focus on core alone, 
pick about three to four exercises that go from a very modified, very simple way to a little bit more advanced, okay? So by the time you get to that third or fourth exercise, it's probably the hardest thing you're gonna do that day. Start small, see how your body's feeling as you're progressing through these specific exercises and work your way up, okay? Key things to always remember is you're working your trunk. Don't think, feel like you have to, everything has to be super stiff and rigid when you're doing that. Light brace, start the movement and see how your body responds. That's gonna be the number one ticket for you to navigate different types of exercises. Now, once you've had your two to three exercises picked, do about two to three sets of each exercise and the rep range stay around eight to 10, okay? So if you're doing eight and you get to that second set or that third set and hitting that eighth rep kind of hurts and at six, you really kind of start feeling weird, stop at six, okay? Because you always wanna train under your threshold, under your pain threshold. So if you get to the second of four exercises, then stop there and don't push it any further than that. So in review, three to four exercises, two to three sets per exercise. You're staying in an eight, maybe 10 rep range for each exercise, but you're always gonna stop before you hit your pain threshold. Don't ever push through at this point there's no reason to feel like you have to push and go hard and be intense about your core training. You wanna be gentle, you wanna feel safe, you want your mind to, to be convinced that you are safe doing these exercises. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope this helps. If you have a favorite exercise in this list, let me know below. Again, if you haven't watched that workshop, go over to fitnessforbackpain.com essentials workshop and check that out absolutely free. I have a whole community that's based around fusions alone. So make sure you pick that up and I'll see you on the next video.